Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Neil's Gear Room. It's good to be back. And it's good to try something new. I am going to try and overdub my Japanese version of Neil's Gear Room into English and post this on YouTube as an English video. Today, I am reviewing the Genten Stick. Chopstick. Fly Fisk. Split board. Yes! What an amazing, amazing snowboard. Pulling out of its wrapper right there. Um, I bought this this year at the Niseko showroom in Hokkaido. Niseko. And I've actually been waiting like a month and a half to set it up. Hmm. What was I thinking? Well, sorry, I was busy. I had lots of stuff to do. So this brand new Fly Fisk uh, chopstick split board sat in my office space for about a month and I have finally found the time to set it up Get the bindings on there and hopefully get it out to the mountain soon So I thought I'd introduce it to you today. And uh, as I said, I'm trying something new here I've done these gear room episodes on and off for the last couple of years I haven't done so many recently, but they're a lot of fun and I always do them in Japanese and Yeah, I know it's hard to watch so I thought, okay, it's going to be in Japanese. To me, the style of the Niels gear room is, it's just culturally kind of Japanese. So I want to keep it that way. I like speaking Japanese in these videos when I talk about products that I buy or receive. And yeah, but I do kind of want to share uh, the products and the stuff I'm reviewing, especially things that are like made in Japan or, you know, Japanese. So I'm going to overdub it in English. Okay. so. Uh, right now, I'm talking about my prior split board or the split board. I'm, I'm still going to be using it. Uh, Field Earth is another Japanese snowboard brand. They make a great split board under their Tentacle series. Amazing carbon, very light, uh, really high grade PTEX sole. I mean, just incredibly well made product. The only thing about this board is that it was a little bit too small for me at least when I wear a full backpack with camera and, you know, backcountry gear, etc. The kind of stuff that you need to carry around when you actually go splitboarding. Uh, that puts me, I mean, I'm uh, like 100, uh, excuse me, I'm 74 kilos uh, with nothing on. So with all my gear, I'm like getting up close to 100 kilos. It's too much for this board. So that was kind of my inspiration for buying another splitboard. And I've been, you know, I like to get like one Genten stick board every year. They have so many models and so many boards that I want to ride. At least feel what it feels like to own it and ride it in my lifetime. That I kind of feel like I need to buy one a year to get that done. So I've been looking at the Fly Fisk. It's a wider board. It's a stiffer board. It's a bigger board. And I knew that that would be perfect for my body size. Talking about the uh, bindings, I use spark bindings. Uh, a lot of Genten riders use the Karakoram system. I looked at it, I just don't like the way it looks. Um, I'm not into a lot of bindings with metal in them. Although the spark bindings are quite metal. But they're very simple and the high back is the way I like it and the straps are good too. So spark bindings, uh, that means I have to use the Vole system. I ordered another set of Vole pucks to go on the new board. Uh, and I'm going to use the bindings on both, switching back and forth. So here I am talking about the price of this board. It sells for like $1,600 uh, on some Japanese websites that I checked. That's $1,600. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, I did not pay full price for this board. Um, I'm thankful to have some connections at the Niseko showroom and I always go over there and I'm like, yo guys, uh, kind of want to buy something. Can you give me a real nice discount? And I've known them for a long, long time and we've done some work together. So they give me a nice discount. I'm very thankful. The camera arches from the center of the board all the way to three centimeters inside the widest point of a board, both nose and tail. To turn this camera has to be stepped on and the bottom pressed against the surface. This type of camera is effective at a resort, compacted slope or on a flat face. But it has lots of demerit and deep powder, fresh snow, or terrain with three-dimensional features. It is arched against the direction of the board, then the board could get hooked on the snow easily, making it turn less agile. Screw you, Camber! We want 
Axle Camber. Radical Axle Camber eliminates hooking and prevents nosedives in deep powder or fresh snow while maintaining a natural flotation. It is designed and shaped to perform its best when the rider stands neutrally on top of the board. It is made flat from the widest part of the nose to about the front foot. The arch begins there and reaches the highest point around the back foot and it ends at the widest point of the tail. When the rider stands on the board, the arch gets pushed and the area ahead of the front foot barely touches the snow. Do you get it? Axel Camber. Uh, they have a really nice graph here. Go okay, that was a little English uh, text that I read straight off the Genten website. It explains their camber concept, Axel Camber, very well. I think you get the point. So there's a lot of technology and you know, it costs a lot of money to make these boards. Flip boards are expensive anyway. Uh, Genten boards are very expensive. When you combine that, you're going to have a very, very expensive board. So my stance is uh, 58 centimeters in general on most boards that I ride. Got a tape measure here and I measured up a stance. First it was like 59, but shifted a little bit and found 58 centimeters. So there's this little guide that comes with the volley pucks that you use uh, to put them on. So they're nice and lined up and straight. Yeah, as you can see, it's not the easiest thing to use. You gotta get the, the disc kind of locked in there, then find the holes you want it to be connected to, get the angles right. It takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of thinking. Got them both on. Now, uh, you need the heel lift or walk mode parts that go in between the pucks where the bindings go. Wanted to make sure the binding fit on. So, got that spark binding. Now this just sort of slides all the way in to the fole pucks. Got it in there. <laughs> spark bindings work real easy. You just sort of lock down on the toe piece there and that pin goes in a little hole and your bindings are locked and never going to come off. Okay, so the other parts, uh, I had to take these off the field earth board, which is kind of unfortunate. I ordered what I thought were the right parts from the Vole website, but I was wrong. The spark binding kind of uses its own specific walk mode setup. So I'm going to have to switch that back and forth between the two boards. Now, here I am trying to take the binding off and I suddenly realized that my stance is not going to work. Yeah, damn. The uh, the walk mode parts, like there's only one hole where they go, so you have to put them there. So you have to adjust your stance on the board in relation to that. So it was too close. The heel cup here, as you can see, when I pull that back, it's going to hit that walk mode part. So my binding stance needs to go more forward on the board. So. Being in the rush that it was, I just moved the front foot forward just enough to be able to get the binding off and I left the back foot where it was. That means uh, my stance is wider than normal, like 60 centimeters. I added two centimeters to my stance width. And I thought, ah, the hell with it. I'll just ride that once, maybe at the resort, check it out, see what it's like. And if I don't like it, I'll, I'll fix it later. But I was in a rush kind of filming this episode. So here I am measuring it up. Realizing that it's going to be pretty wide. Just so you know, the 60 centimeter stance, uh, it was not good. It did not feel good. In fact, it felt terrible. It felt really weird. I mean, maybe for somebody it'll work, but for me, it's got to be like 58. There I do. The splitting of the board. Split! Uh, but no, we're not done, folks. Split boards have a lot of things you have to do. There's a lot involved in split boarding. It's not for everyone, by the way. If you're a real gearhead and you just like all these little tech pieces of equipment, and you're using equipment from a lot of different companies on one setup. This is a Genten board with spark bindings, volley pucks, and the uh, skins or the seals that you put on the base of the board what was that? 
Uh, you'll see it in a minute here. Um, an Austrian brand seals. So you're putting a lot of different things together that maybe aren't going to work so well together because maybe no one else uses that combination. Um, it makes it hard. It especially makes setting up a board hard because, yeah. Now, these skins are sold along with the board and basically they are pre-shaped and pre-sized to fit the Genten chopstick of your choice. So these skins were cut and shaped and made exactly for the fly fisk board. This is an incredible thing. It makes your life so much easier. Normally skins are sold in kind of a long size. They're they're just a like not a square shape, but they're just cut straight. And you actually have to apply them to your board, put these little nose clips on, these tail clips on, and then cut the sides so that it doesn't overhang the edges anywhere. Blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of stuff involved in just getting your skin set up. Again, if that's what you're into and you like that kind of stuff, it's going to be fun. You're going to have a blast. But if you don't like that kind of stuff or you tend to screw up things that you do on your own because you don't read the instruction manual like you should, yeah, that's me. Um, you can screw this stuff up and they're very expensive. So the fact that Genten has gotten their skins like pre-shaped and made like this, boy, this is making your life so much easier. Worth the cost. I didn't even look at the cost. When he showed me the skins, I was like, sold. I don't care what that costs. Done. I can just go home, put them on and go to the mountain straight away. Yeah. So I'm applying the uh, skin here on one of the boards. Getting it straight and lined up. Yeah, you don't know how good this is. Like every skin I've had up until now, there's been so many problems, and I've had even though I had people like do it for me and do it properly, I'd have to go back and recut them and yeah. Fly fisk chopstick. Boom. Genten stick designed by Tamai Taro. Amazing piece of product in my hands right here. Um, what can I say? It's a very high quality board. It's a little expensive. But you get those skins, you get a really amazing snowboard to start with that has been turned into a split board. For someone who is a little bigger, um, heavier weight, or you carry a lot of equipment, like me, between 75 and 100 and something kilos, this is the split board you're going to want, want to ride. You're going to get so much more float. It's, I used to ride like Jones snowboards and Burton uh, split boards, and I will never do that again. Once you ride a split, like a field earth or a Genten split board, you're not going back. A little riding footage of me in the background there. Testing it out with its 60 centimeter wide stance. Yeah, I'm going to fix the stance. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this English edition of Neil's Gear Room. Tune in again for the next one.